Hello everyone and welcome back to Paradise on Pennies. I'm Heather and today I want to talk specifically to the ladies who are preparing to live on the road. This is uh, in line with a bunch of videos I've been putting together on some tips and tricks for the ladies out there, the lady nomads. So you can see I put them all together in a playlist so you can find them easily here on the channel and hopefully you can just binge watch those and get yourself all prepared to hit the road. And today I want to talk about a short list of mistakes to avoid. If you're hitting the road soon, heed my warning here of some of these things that you don't want to uh, make these mistakes once you get out on the road. Uh, you don't want to learn the hard way. So hopefully I can help you avoid that with today's tips. So the first mistake to avoid is choosing the wrong rig. This can apply to anyone, ladies and guys out there, uh, that are hitting the road. So definitely make sure you do a lot of research up front and find the best rig for you. Because this can set you off on the wrong foot right at the beginning. This is going to be your transportation and your home. And you don't want it to be the wrong one. And you don't have to be out there and be like, yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> if you really don't. So do some research up front. We have, we did extensive research with our process and we actually posted the videos of all our research on here to help anyone out. So check those out. They might be helpful. We talked about all the different types of rig choices and, and put out the pros and cons of all of them. Check those out as a good starter point and then maybe write down your own list of pros and cons so you find the rig that's specifically best for you. Now, when it comes to ladies out there, you may or may not be comfortable with a really big rig. If you're going to be solo, big is not necessarily going to be really nice to have either. I mean, even if you're not solo, a bigger rig is not always better. So, make sure you understand what level, what size you're comfortable with. If you need four-wheel drive, um, if you're comfortable with something that's tall, um, you don't want something with a high rollover rate. So you want to be comfortable in your rig, driving it, parking it, and comfortable on the inside as well. So you have to kind of play with these factors of accessibility, if you can get where you need to get to, size, you want room, but you don't want it too big. And ladies, we, I currently live in a truck camper. We were in an SUV, but now we're in a truck camper setting, and I love the truck camper. Um, but you may or may not be comfortable with a truck camper and some of the things like putting it on, taking it off, shouldn't need to do that often. Um, but if you're not comfortable with that, it may not be the right rig for you. I don't know. Um, but it is great for accessibility and space and all those trade-offs. And then if you have a dog with you, you also need to consider a level of comfort for your dog companion as well. So just some things to think about. There's a whole big list of other things to help you um, that you're going to need to consider when choosing your rig, but make sure you pick the right rig. That is your whole foundation of living on the road. So big tip there, avoid that mistake, get the right rig from the start. Okay, next one is really for the ladies, but maybe guys too. I wouldn't go out there thinking you're going to be on the road and be glamorous. I would just skip the glam. I made a whole video on this uh, topic specifically that I called something like go bear spray over hairspray. <laughs> and what I meant was you're probably going to want to embrace being outdoors and then you need bear spray maybe for the bears versus having to carry along with you and worry about fixing your hair when you're on the road. I mean, from my perspective, there's a purpose for living on the road. And we all have a different purpose, uh, maybe a couple of them, for our reasoning for why we want to live on the road. And maybe part of that is financial, part of that is freedom, part of that is getting away from the rat race. Those are all great reasons to live on the road. But just make sure that you have that reason and if you're trying to give yourself a better life, ladies, getting rid of the glam is a great way to have a better life. You don't want to have to worry about that stuff. And we have limited space, too, so you don't want to have to be hauling around tons of makeup and hair products and all the other stuff that goes along with being a girl in traditional life. My advice? Skip it. It's much better for your mental and physical health and well-being anyway. 
And, you know, it's kind of character building if you can get rid of all that stuff. So give it a try. Um, like I said, you have limited space, so it's good for space. It's good for the budget. The budget matters here. So getting rid of a lot of those products also helps you save money. And if you're earth conscious, planet conscious, environmentally conscious, um, getting rid of that stuff is also good for that too. So this is a great way for you to finally rid yourself of the burden of a being a girl. So go for it. <laughs> uh, okay, let's move down the line. Another very girl-specific thing here is don't forget about your period on the road. While it is totally doable and fine, um, if you camp, you might already be comfortable with a um, dealing with it in a non-traditional setting. But again, you're living in smaller, a smaller space, tight quarters. You have less space for stuff. And traditionally, ladies have been giving a nice burden of stuff here. Um, the typical pads, tampons, everything that goes along with it are a big pain in the butt. And it creates a lot more garbage. And again, if part of your um, moral foundation revolves around eco-consciousness, then like me, I was looking for an alternative way. Now, my solution was actually to start using a cup, which I didn't grow up knowing about. I don't know if a lot of us did, especially in the States. Uh, but I, I've been using it for a while now, and it has been fantastic. And now all I need is a cup. Um, great space saver. I've had no issues with it. And then I don't have to carry around all these products. And it's also a money saver, too. I talk about that in detail in another video, so if you are interested in my experience with the cup, I'll put the link and you can check out how that goes and maybe it'll work for you too. Maybe that's a solution. I haven't really found a ton of other solutions. There are some out there. I know a lot of off-grid ladies deal with this too and have solutions, so maybe check out some of their stuff as well. Um, but you will need to think about it, think about how you'll deal with it from the product perspective, from the sanitary perspective, and space and budget. So just come up with a strategy there and good luck to you. <laughs> okay, so that leads us into the next mistake to avoid. And basically, you do want to budget. <laughs> if you are not a millionaire, you want to budget and you want to start thinking about this before you get on the road. Sit down, make a budget, I talk about this in a lot of other videos. Please watch the other videos and take away the full picture of my budget advice um, because it's very important and you can it, this can also set you off on the wrong foot. Um, doing things cheaper is going to be much better for you. You want to leave behind the stress, the rat race, and all that. Isn't that the point of living on the road? Uh, so write down a budget ahead of time so that you don't get yourself in a financial trap on the road. Living on the road can actually help you with the financing side of life. You can get better at it as you go. We started off, we were already pretty simplistic, um, but as we've gone, we have acquired new strategies on how to save money and how to live on a budget. And it's just this ever growing skill set that we keep acquiring on how to do things a little cheaper. We share that with you guys here, so hopefully that'll help you. But you might come up with your own ways too, so just keep that in mind. But start off with some sort of budget. Know where you're going to be at. Know what kind of monthly expenditures you're likely to uh, acquire and how you're going to cover those. So with that, I'd say maybe when you're getting rid of stuff, like maybe getting rid of the glam and getting rid of other stuff in your life, get rid of as many expenses as you can. Don't drag along with you all these expenses and these things that you think you're going to need. Pick a few luxuries, and I'm talking like a new definition of luxuries. So maybe you really want to have coffee on the cold mornings. Fine, have your coffee, but consider that a luxury. And then maybe a few other things. Pick those luxuries and say, these are going to be my luxuries, and get rid of all the rest of them. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you trouble. Trust me. Incorporate that into your budget. Also in your budget... Uh, be careful with hobbies. Uh, you don't want a ton of expensive things that you want to try to do and maintain. Uh, you might want to hit up the national parks at first. It's a big thing people like to do if they haven't seen them all. Great. There's a national park pass. It'll save you money if you're going to a lot of them in a year. You'll likely shed that desire once you've seen most of them and you've kind of been entrenched in the crowds. They're beautiful places, um, but it's 
probably something that will also add up monetarily. So that might be one of your things. So put that in your budget at the beginning. But what you don't want to do is say, I'm going to be kayaking and whatever, surfing and skydiving and, um, you know, uh, this huge list of hobbies that you have to go out and buy expensive gear for and also have the inconvenience of trying to um, toy it around with you as well, which will eventually add up to more cost one way or another. So just be careful and start thinking of things that you can do that will be cheap or free. There's lots of free things you can do out there. Again, we spend no money, pretty much no money on fun and entertainment. I mean, every once in a while we might, we go to like a museum or something, but for the most part that our budget is next to zero for fun. And that's because we do things like hike. We have dogs that we hang out with. Um, but if you want to be, if you are going solo or you want to be out there and you want to meet people, there's still cheaper ways to go about that hiking. You can still meet people. Um, there are meetup groups where you could still do hobby related things. Uh, maybe you already have some gear so you can do those activities, but just don't like, you know, make this huge list of activities just because you're going out and you're finally going to live. Um, it will stunt your ability to live as soon as you find out that you blew your budget and you have to go back to work. So be careful there. Heed my warning. And if you want some fun, entertaining ways to think about how to save money, check out our Nomad Budget video where we talk about how to get on the road and save money. And you'll also find it interesting because I am a, a different character in that video. So you can laugh along the way as well as learn and get ideas on how to save money. So check out that video. It was a really fun one for us to put together. And moving on down the line, mistakes to avoid. Don't tell everyone and anyone that you're living on the road, that you hey, live in that van. Uh, I talk about this more extensively in another video about safety, but especially if you're a solo female traveler, you don't want to go, you want to cut the habit of telling everyone um, where you're at and what your rig is and that you're alone. Um, that's definitely a safety precaution and a mistake to avoid. I know we love telling our story. It's really cool and go for it with the right people, but learn to read people and, and know not to just tell everyone um, exactly what your situation is as a safety precaution. And if you want more safety tips, go ahead and check out the video where I'll talk in more detail about safety related things that will help you prepare, feel more confident and get out on the road and not have anything happen. Um, prevention over responsiveness is important here. And lastly, the last mistake to avoid is don't cling to comfort. Uh, you are making this new lifestyle. You're embarking on this new adventure. Let it be an adventure. Don't just hang out in the same town that you're comfortable with or even just a friend's town and then park your van there and then that's it. Don't just hang out with the same group of people. Go out there, meet new people, have new experiences, pick up new hobbies, do something new. Make it a real adventure. That's my last tip. Avoid those mistakes and you'll be on your way to the most awesome budget nomad adventure, the most awesome time in your life that you've ever experienced being on the road. It's humbling, it's, it's wonderful, and I hope you get out there and I hope this helps you. If you found these tips helpful, do me a favor, just hit the like button. That helps other people see the video on YouTube as well and helps them know that it's really useful. Help them get on the road as well. If you want to see all those other videos in this playlist that I'm putting together here, that is ladies, Lady Nomad playlist, then if you subscribe to the channel, you'll see the video right when I get it out there and you won't miss anything. So just subscribe to the channel and we've got a ton of other videos as well. Not just Lady Nomad stuff, but anyone nomad stuff. So check it out and let me know what you think. And thank you guys for being here. I will put some more tips and tricks together for you and get them out as soon as possible. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye.